Hi, I'm Lyndon Shaw. This is Shaw Biofarm. Uh, this is a five acre piece. Um, the actual uh, garden area is about half an acre intensively planted. This is the Nanusitables farm. The farm is 23 acres, but we're largely farming just less than 10. My name's Chris Snook. Um, the name of the farm is Virgin Farms. Uh, we got uh, just under five acres here, only about uh, two and a half in production at the moment. Well, in one sense, all my life, um, you know, over 40 years, as my parents got me involved in this. But uh, selling vegetables, you know, 15 years. We must have been farming here now for about um, 25 years, I guess. I've been farming here for uh, going on our second season and uh, prior to that was uh, working on a farm in Australia for a year so fairly new at it. I think the number number one reason we started our own farm uh, we didn't really we didn't really start a farm we just started gardening and we, we grew a lot of uh, excess produce we gave it away and then we decided to Someone said, why don't you sell a bit of it to cover seed costs? And that's how we started just selling at the end of our driveway. We, we were coming up to a retirement age. Um, my husband came from farming families and, 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 and has education in, in agriculture. And we thought, well, what are we going to do for the next 25 years? And so we decided that we would buy a farm and go farm it. And because we had neighbors here who were cousins, uh, that that brought us to uh, to Nanus. Uh, I guess primarily to take care of yourself, be healthy. Um, wanted to really get into feeling like I'm part of community, you know, a healthy lifestyle, kind of a whole bit about that. Just this year, I've got smart about what to grow. I've uh, narrowed it down to the essentials. Um, and that's kind of hard to do because you, as a gardener, you want to grow everything. At least, at least I do. But um, the top sellers, if you're, you're if you're you're growing for market, and that would be, you know, carrots, uh, lettuce, beets, potatoes, onions, tomatoes. Those are the most popular at the market. That's what people want. And uh, I, I've got to learn to concentrate on growing more of more of those essential vegetables. Well, what what to grow for me? Uh, maybe the not maybe not Lauren, but for me was because we belong to the North American Farm Direct Marketing Association. Right away, huge organization. More than a thousand, fifteen hundred people would turn up for these meetings. So they were in big, fairly large agricultural states in the United States usually. So you got a really good idea from a two or three days of speakers what kind of produce um, products um, were considered to be sellable and the reason they were there is because they were successful. I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, so I'm going with diversity for now and seeing what what works out over the season, what works out here. Cause we've got tons of predators and tons of weeds at the moment. <laughs> Uh, lots of brassicas, salad greens. I'm focusing primarily on tomatoes in the greenhouse. We don't have one main crop like other growers that I know who specialize in carrots or garlic. Uh, but again, the, the main popular vegetables, you know, carrots, sa sa salad greens are huge, potatoes, beets, uh, you know, tomatoes. Swiss chard and kale, those, those are the, the, the standards. Well, we be began right from the start as a result of me meeting a, a, a young woman in California whose name was Nikki, and she had rented two acres just outside of San Francisco all those years ago, 25 years ago, and was growing salad greens for the restaurant market in, in San Francisco. Hugely successful, and she talked about it at the meeting, and that's got, she got me started. Tomatoes. So uh, yeah, everybody's calling me the tomato guy in the market, which I don't really know if that was essentially what I was planning for, but yeah, I guess I can grow decent tomatoes. Everything else is uh, a work in progress, but yeah. 
I like tomatoes. Uh, we sell our vegetables um, during the market season every Saturday, 10 till 2 at over at the farm gate. Um, the Lanceville uh, Farmer's Market on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Uh, we have in the past sold at the Cedar Market, but we're no longer doing that. Um, last year we were at the Parksville Friday Night Market. Um, and this year we'll also be at the Wednesday Night Market um, at Bevan Park. <laughs> we pull people in off the street and say, come and buy our product. Yeah, well, we no, no, we've always sold, sold to restaurants, and that to me is the most interesting because they set your standard. You can't possibly send anything to a restaurant that they can't use, and, and it is grand, so it has, that's a good thing. It keeps you on your toes. And then we've always done box program, not always, because we take a rest from them from time to time, but we often do box program. And uh, we do a little bit of commercial sales and we do farmers markets and we've been in one two three four i guess farmers markets in this region currently we're doing the um the parksville museum market and of course we market at the farm and that is uh, an all-round year market currently we're selling our food at uh, the parksville farmers market down at Pine Ridge Farm, uh, which is a kilometer down the street here, and a couple little restaurants and uh, Qualcomm Beach Farmer's Market, definitely Arrington Market. Um, farming, gardening, um, changed my life. I, it's hard to say because I've always, I've always been growing things. I've always had my hand in, in the soil. Um, you know, I've, I've always lived here. I've grown up this way, so I, I don't really have anything to compare it with. Uh, I think it's, it's something that's really done for me is, is kept me um, linked in touch with nature um, you know and if I had just lived in the city in the suburb I don't, I don't think I'd have that, that connection. Well we used to gallivant around the world or we don't do that anymore <laughs> so not much in the way of holidays uh, you think farming all the time, even when you're not here, but always from time to time we get on the subject that how do we make ends meet because um, farming uh, doesn't pay. It's something that somehow or other you have to have some supplementary money from somewhere. That could be from grants, it could be from family, it could be from uh, retirement income, but you you have to have it because you're only uh, making a decent living when those people are coming to shop from you every day. So there are many days of the year where they're not, in the, that a farm has to be sustained 365 days of the year and it's sustaining the rest of the time that is a serious problem. And I, we, don't, we don't have that to our heads yet, but um, times are coming rapidly when it, it, it will become more apparent. Farming has changed my life uh, in many ways. I, yeah, I get to make my own hours. Uh, I love what I do. Um, I'm part of a community now. I guess before uh, coming from the city, you didn't really feel like you're part of anything. So here, kind of starting to connect with people. And, being able to grow food and directly engaging with uh, your customers is really, really special.